Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, were in a small settlement not far from the narrow strip of Arctic Ocean that separated Herschel Island from the mainland. It was the first time they had been in that northernmost part of the Yukon Territory, and the Mountie was given a hearty welcome by Constable Tom Longwell. I'm mighty glad you got here, Sergeant Preston. You can help me share the responsibility of Professor Lambert and his daughter. Professor Lambert, see here? Well, you've heard of him? Indeed I have. He's been on many expeditions to study the Eskimos, but I didn't know he was around here. Yes, he is, and his daughter's here with him. And, Sergeant, if you ask me, the professor will be lucky to leave here with his life. Huh? How's that? I'll give you the facts in as few words as possible. Have you ever heard of the ill-fated ship, the Pegasus? The Pegasus was a trade ship under a skipper known as Old Moby. ship was caught in a big freeze-up near Herschel Island. The crew perished. Ruins have been lying offshore for, oh, 50 years or more. Remember any stories of a fortune that was supposed to have been on board? (laughs) No one takes much stock in those stories. Oh, don't laugh, Sergeant. Huh? According to the stories, there was a small wooden chest aboard the Pegasus. It held gold and precious jewels. Old Moby had collected them from all parts of the world. No such treasure was found in the wreck of the Pegasus. No, and neither was the body of the captain, Old Moby. You're very serious, Tom. What are you getting at? Old Moby must have realized his only chance lay in crossing the ice to the mainland and hoping to find some friendly Eskimos who might provide food and shelter. He left the Pegasus, taking his treasure with him. How do you know that? You'll understand in a minute. All right, go on with the story. Moby must have found the chest too heavy to carry very far. So he left it and covered it with a pile of rocks to mark the place. Again? Yes. Then he pushed on as far as possible, but finally perished. But he left a chart telling about the treasure and showing the location of the cairn. I don't know all this. Professor Lambert told me. How did he know? On his last expedition, he found an Eskimo named Oluk. Among Oluk's prized possessions was a bottle that had been in his family for many years. Lambert saw that there was a message inside the bottle. It proved to be old Moby's chart and letter. Oluk's father had found it years and years ago. You mean to say that Professor Lambert has a chart showing the location of old Moby's cairn? More than that. Professor Lambert found that cairn, and is within two hours of town. What? He and his daughter have been up here for several weeks now, looking over the ground, making surveys and measurements. Yesterday, Lambert came into the trading post. He was in high spirits. He announced that he'd found the cairn. And the treasure? Well, everyone's wondering about that. If he finds it, Sergeant, both he and his daughter will be in mortal danger. This settlement is filled with hard men who would stop at nothing to get old Moby's jewels. That's Jane Lambert. Quiet, King. Quiet down, boy. Oh, Constable Longwell, I can't stand it any longer. I'm so worried. I... Oh. Come in, Miss Jane. I, I didn't know someone was here. This is Sergeant Preston. Oh. Sergeant, this is Miss Jane Lambert. I was just telling you about her father, the professor. How do you do? Very glad to know you, Miss Lambert. <laughs> Mrs. King, my partner. Oh, he's a beautiful dog. Hello, King. I, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. You I... said you were worried about your father? Yes. Yes, it is, but I... I was just telling Sergeant Preston about old Moby's cairn. Your father actually found it? Yes, he did. He found it yesterday, and I... I'm afraid he talked too much about it. Oh, why are you so worried, Miss Jane? Well, father left here this morning. He was going directly to the cairn. He was going to break away the stones and bring back the treasure. He expected to be back by noon. By noon? Four hours ago. I... I tried not to worry, but I... Do you know how to reach the cairn? No, I don't. Father has the chart with him. Sergeant Preston, maybe we could follow his tracks. There can't possibly be any tracks. There was snow and wind this morning just after he left. It's been calm since noon. But by that time, the tracks would have been blown over. Even so, King may be able to follow the trail. Miss Lambert, if you'll show us where your father left town, we'll see what King can do. Well, I don't know just where he left town. He said goodbye to me at the house where we've been living. You were with him, Tom. 
Oh, uh, yeah, yes, I was. Do you know where we left town, Tom? Can you start us on the trail? Why, <clears throat> that is... Uh... Oh, what's the matter? Well, you may as well know it, Sergeant Preston. I went to the cairn with him. You? Yes, sir. Well, then there's no need to follow a trail. You can take us directly to the place. Uh, well, yes, Sergeant Preston. I guess I can. Why didn't you say you'd been there? Well, the professor made me promise I wouldn't tell anyone. But why not? Well, I guess he didn't want to take a chance that people would question me about the location of the treasure. But on the other hand, he wanted me to know where to look for him in case he didn't come back. Well, he hasn't returned. I was to wait till nightfall before I went looking for him. Father must have known that he was in danger. You saw the cairn, Tom? Yes, but the professor made me leave before he started taking it apart. Well, not wait till nightfall. Got your pocket, Tom. We'll start at once. Sergeant Preston and the constable made good time across the windswept snow, with King trotting at his master's side. Tom knew exactly where to go. They had been on the trail for half an hour when a dog team pulling a sled came from the opposite direction. King barked a greeting. The oncoming man, still some distance away, suddenly changed his direction, turning his dog sharply to the side. That's odd. He acts as if he's trying to avoid us, Tom. That isn't the professor, is it? No, he didn't have a dog team or a sled. Stop for a minute. I'm going to put the binoculars on him. I wonder where he's coming from. I don't know. What can you see? Looks like a big man, heavily bearded. I think he's looking over this way. Here, Tom, you take a look through the glasses, see if you know him. All right. Steady, King. Quiet, boy, quiet now. Anyone you know, Tom? No, never saw him before in my life. Must be heading for the settlement. Wonder why he cut to the side. Did he do that to avoid meeting us? Can't tell. Want to try and question him? No, not now. I hear your binoculars. Thanks. Let's shove on. One King. That fellow with the dog team has been traveling the straight line. He passed old Moby's cairn. How soon will we be there? 20 or 30 minutes. If it's so close to the settlement, it's curious it hasn't been discovered long before this. It's in a rather obscure place, uh, sort of a gully. Most of the time, the snow fills that gully and buries the cairn. Then, of course, hardly anyone ever comes this way. What's the matter with your dog? I don't know. What is it, King? What's the matter, boy? He's got his ears cocked straight ahead. Tom, I've seen him act this way before. You have? Yes. The last time King behaved like this, he pointed toward a dead man. After Sergeant Preston's surprising announcement, a silence fell. The two men proceeded on their way, both watching King, who registered increasing tension. Presently, the big dog stopped abruptly. The fur was bristling on his back. And he uttered a low growl that was filled with menace. All right, King. Quiet down. You sounded a warning. Tom, how far away is that cairn? See that big boulder a hundred yards ahead? Yes. Well, that's at the edge of the gully. The cairn is at the bottom of the gully. I see. But incidentally, the trail of that stranger comes directly from there. Yes, I've noticed that. And you must have seen the cairn. And the professor. Yeah, if the professor's still there. Let's go on. That, that dog of yours is... You know, something's going on in that gully. King, old boy, I wish you could talk my language. Hey, Sergeant, get out your binoculars. See something, Tom? I think I did. Look to the left of that big boulder. I could swear I saw something move. Yes, I think you're right. I'll look through the glass and see. Sergeant. Uh, King, uh, behind the rock. If someone wants gun, play, I'll accommodate him. Hold it, Jim. Uh, Here, King. Uh, Hold your fire in the name of the law. Come on, Tom. King, stay with me, boy. Hill. Uh, mighty easy target. There's another shot. We'll fire back. I can see a man peeking around the side of that rock. So can I. Huh? Warned us to keep our distance. Come any closer and I'll fire again. That's not Professor Lambert. I didn't think so. Hold your fire. You heard what I said. Don't come any closer. Who are you? Sergeant Preston. Northwest Mounted Police. Look, he's stepping out into the open. Maybe he didn't hear me the first time I told him who we were. He's still holding his rifle ready. How do I know you're telling the truth? How do I know you're in the law? Better open your pocket so he can see your uniform, sir. Good idea. You recognize this uniform? You are the law. I'm glad you're here. Coming up to meet us. Calm down, King. Take it easy, boy. Hey, that, that shot I fired, I wasn't aiming at you. It was just a warning shot. I didn't know who you were. No way to tell you that you were a Mountie. Your uniform was covered. All right, I'll accept that explanation. I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is Constable Tom Longwell. Who are you? Well, me, I'm Greg Bascom. Maybe you met my partner on the trail. Well, you saw a man on the trail. Had a dog sled. That's Joe. He was on his way to the settlement. He was going for the law. He went out of his way to avoid meeting us. Likely didn't know who you were. Maybe he thought you were the killers coming back. Killers? Yeah. Down there at the bottom of that gully. There's a dead man. Sergeant, 
I guess King's hunch was right. We'll go take a look at him. I don't know who he is, Sergeant. Me and Joe ran across the body a little while ago. All right, Bascom. We'll ask the questions after we've seen the body. Come on. Greg Bascom led the way into the gully, followed by Sergeant Preston, King, and the constable. <laughs> the bottom of the gully, which had once in the long distant past been the bed of an Arctic stream, was covered with rocks and boulders of all sizes. A number of the stones, about the size of a man's head, had been collected by old Moby for the cairn. But the cairn had been broken apart. The stones lay scattered. Nearby, the lifeless form of a man sprawled on the snow. Oh, it's the professor. That's just the way we found him, Sergeant. Have you moved the body? No, sir. Me and Joe came here about a half hour ago. We can see the tracks of the sled and the dogs. Yes. We felt his wrist to see if there was a pulse, but we didn't move him. He was laying on his side, just like you see him now. Here's the cause of death, Sergeant Preston. Stabbed. Yes. I don't know how long he's been dead. It's pretty hard to tell. Look at your dog. What is it, King? He sees or hears something over there among those rocks. All right, King. Go. What do you see? I don't know, but look at him travel. He's making a beeline for that big boulder well, there. Is there someone there? Oh, There's your answer. answer. It's an Eskimo. King's got him. Hold him, King. Oh, Greg Bascom, the man who had found the body of Professor Lambert, and Tom Longwell, the constable, stood watching while Sergeant Preston dodged among the rocks on the floor of the gully. King stood threateningly over the Eskimo who had been hiding behind one of the large snow-covered boulders. Take him away! Take him away! Don't let him kill me! Sergeant Preston was surprised to hear the Eskimo speak good English. All right, King. I'll take over, boy. Get up. The, the dogs... He would kill me. Not without orders. Who are you? Me. Olak. Olak? The name's familiar. Oh, me come here to look for friend. Who is your friend? But me see him over there on ground. Professor Lambert? That's right. That's it. That's what I heard about you. You're the one who gave Professor Lambert a chart. That's right. That's right. Him good friend. Him sleep? No, he's been killed. You walk ahead of me. I'll join the constable and that other man. How have you been hiding behind that rock? Oh, me there a long time. We travel two day, two night. We come near to rock, still dark. Me fall asleep. How long ago did you wake him? Hear gun, wake up. See friend on ground. See man with rifle. See you. Other man and dog come from that way. And you've been asleep all day? That's right. Travel two day, two night. No sleep. Who is he, Sergeant Preston? Is he the killer? So his name is Olak. Olak? He's the one who gave Professor Lambert old Moby's map and letter. That's right. That's right. Hold on, hold on now. What are you trying to tell us? It's at least 48 hours of travel from here to the village where Professor Lambert got that information. It checks with what he told me, Tom. Said he'd travel two days and two nights to get here. That's right. How long have you been hiding behind that rock? Said he's been there all day. Fell asleep before daylight. Wakened when Bascom fired at us. I didn't fire at you, Sergeant. It was just a warning shot. Oh, whatever it was, it wakened Olak. It's a little hard to believe that he slept all day. Sure of one thing, Tom. He hasn't moved from his place behind that rock since noon. If he had, there'd be footprints in the snow. There were none? No. Snow heavy. Wind blow hard when me lying in shelter of rock to sleep. Any tracks he made before noon have been covered. And he must have been there sleeping when Professor Lambert and I walked here this morning. That's right. He must have been there behind the rock when the professor was murdered. Exactly. Chances are he's the one that killed this man, all right. We'll see about that a little later. Going to search you, Olek. See if you have any weapons. You figure the Eskimo's guilty, huh? No, not necessarily. He's about the only one, aside from those in town, who knew that Lambert was in search of a treasure. Ah, Here's a knife. Uh, You'll not take knife. Take it easy, Olek. That's my knife. You'll not take it. You'll get it back. Now, Bascom, I'll have to disarm you. Me? Oh, now, hold on. And another rifle, Bascom. All right, but if you're accusing me of killing that man... I'm not accusing anyone just yet. But you're going to put me under arrest? Nothing's been said about an arrest here, Tom. You take charge of Bascom's knife. Right. That's about the same size as Olak's. Either one of them could have killed Lambert. Yes, and the same goes for the one that you're wearing. Yeah, that's true, Bascom. Or yours, Sergeant Press. Our knives are all about the same size, aren't they, Bascom? Yeah, I guess he hasn't any other weapons, Sergeant. I just had the knife and the rifle, that's all. I don't see anything of the treasure. wonder if Professor Lambert found it in the can. Yes, he did. Oh, what? Say, he did. 
When me and Joe came along here, we saw a wooden chest. It was right there alongside the dead man. There was a lock, but it had been broken open. What was inside the chest? Oh, there were some jewels and things wrapped in oil skin. Where is that chest? Well, by this time, I guess it's in the settlement. Joe took it with him so as he could turn it over to the law. I see. It's mighty funny that the killer would go away and leave the chest. We're not sure he went away, Tom. That's so. You needn't look at me. If I'd have been the killer, do you think I'd have stayed here to keep the wolves away from the dead man while my partner went to get the law? No. Your partner went out of his way to dodge the law when he saw us coming toward him. He didn't know who you were. He couldn't see the uniform any more than I could when I fired on you. I thought maybe you were the two murderers coming back to get the loot. Joe likely figured the same thing. Bascom, you examined the treasure. Well, I... What was it? Sergeant, I'm not one to judge. But from what I saw, the jewels and the gold didn't amount to much. No? Uh, some brass belt buckles, fancy glass beads, and a few pieces of California gold. California gold? Coins, maybe $50, $60 worth. You'll see the whole thing when you get back to the settlement. The killer may have looked on him. It's not worth thinking. Maybe so. Uh, dog, what? Well, look, Sergeant. Hey, what's the matter with that dog? King's digging into the snow. What is it, King? What are you after, boy? Uh, it, it'll soon be dark. Maybe we'd better start back. Plenty of time. None of that snow fly. What are you after, King? Here, boy. Let me help you. There's something here. What is it, Sergeant? Both of some kind. I'll have it out in a minute. Looks like a bandana. It is. There's something wrapped in it. Let's see. Look. Jewels. Gold. Precious stones. This must be old Moby's treasure. Right. The killer left the inferior stuff in the chest and buried these things, intending to return for them. And if it hadn't been for King, we'd have thought the chest held everything. So many footprints around here, we never suspected something had been buried. Uh, footprints. All right, all right. I admit that me and Joe made most of them. We had to look around here, didn't we? We made the footprints, but that don't mean that we killed that man. I tell you, he was dead when we got here. Be pretty hard to determine how long he's been dead, huh, Sergeant? Yes, might have been three hours, might have been six. Now let's get the body back to town. Oh. Have to take turns carrying him, Tom. You and Oluk carry him for a while, then Baskin and I'll take over. Right. Come on, Oluk. Uh, me pick friends off ground. It's going to be tough going, but I guess we can manage. Just a minute. I want to examine the snow where he's been lying. Oh, we managed. That's it, Oluk. We can carry him like this. Wait just a minute. What is it, Sergeant? Something here on the snow where the body's been. All right. Let's get going. What'd you find, Sergeant? It'll keep till we get to the settlement. Is it a clue? Maybe. In fact, it may hang the killer. The men had traveled less than half a mile with the dead weight of the professor when they were met by men from the settlement with dogs and a sled. Oh, oh, oh. Greg Bascom's partner, Joe, had brought them. Just put the body right on the sled there, boys. Here's a blanket to cover it. Right? So you're the one who dodged to the sign to avoid meeting the constable and me. Yeah, I guess you made the same mistake I did, Joe. I, I didn't know this gent was a Mountie either. I went so far as to fire a warning shot. And I saw you two. I thought maybe you were the killers returning the scene of the crime. That's all right, Joe. Sure, everyone looks alike up here. Even Olaf over there has a Hudson Bay Parker like a Mountie. Well, I have the professor on the sled. Let's get into the settlement as quickly as possible so I can find the killer. You expect to find him? Yes. Sergeant Preston found a clue under the body. Uh, what'd you say it was, Sergeant? I didn't say. All set, Tom? All set. Take charge of your dogs, Joe. All right, Sergeant. Jane Lambert had heard the news and had become partially reconciled to the death of her father by the time his body reached the town. It was later in the evening when she came into the trading post to meet Sergeant Preston. But by that time, her grief had given way to a burning desire to see the killer brought to justice. If my plans work out, Miss Lambert, he'll be exposed tonight. The constable said it might be any one of three men. Oluk, Bascom, or Bascom's partner, Joe. It might be Constable Longwell. Tom? Your Oluk could have killed your father before the snow stopped falling. I've asked all four of those men to be here tonight. We'll see what happens. Sergeant, what are you going to do? I'm going to count heavily on King. That's right, boy. Oh, here's the constable now. Hi there. Come in, Tom. Yeah, here's old luck. Take off your parkas and hang them on those pegs there. All right. Good evening, Miss James. Good evening, Constable. Hang your parker right there, old luck. Uh, what's King barking at? I think the others are coming. Quiet, right, King. Oh, Joe and Bascom? Yes. You're right. Come on in, both of you. Uh, sure. Hope this won't take long. I want to get back to the cafe, get into a game of cards. Hang up your parkas. Sure. How long are we going to be here? This won't take long. What are we here for? Come over this side of the room, all of you. All right. You too, Tom. Right, Sergeant. Joe, you weren't with us, and we picked up the professor's body. 
But these other men saw me examine the ground where Lambert had been lying. What did you find there? Yes, Sergeant. You said something about a clue. I have here a bit of string. It's a tie string from the neck of a Hudson Bay parka. All of our parkas have the same sort of string to draw the hood close in exceptionally bad weather. Is that what you found beneath Lambert's body? Only the murderer could have left anything there. Isn't that right, Constable? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Bascom, there's no string on your parka. Oh, I lost it a long time ago. You can't accuse me. Listen, Sergeant, I missed the string from my parka, too, but it couldn't have been beneath Lambert's body. Miss Lambert, how about those other parkas? All four of the parkas are minus the drawstring. All four? Well, you can't prove anything by that. That's why I waited until now for a showdown. This room is warm. King can easily catch and identify a scent, can't you, King? (laughs) You're the first, Constable. King moved at his master's direction and nuzzled the constable's leg. He whimpered in a friendly manner. You're next, Olak. The great dog didn't know what was expected of him. He nuzzled the Eskimo, then turned and looked at Sergeant Preston. Now it's Joe's turn. King moved to the next man. He nuzzled and then hesitated. His sensitive nostrils quivered as he caught a scent he hated. It became stronger, a scent of fear that was obnoxious. The scent that drove all dogs to anger. His growl added fuel to the fear in Joe's heart. The scent increased. Then King leaped back, fangs bared, hair bristling. He's got it. Look out! I'll show you. Look out, Joe! I'll kill that dog. Take him, King. Oh, you don't! Take it out! Take it out! Get this dog! His fist stopped. Baskin, who had started to help his pal. King charged beneath Joe's gun, grabbed the gun arm, and pulled Joe to the floor. All right, King. I'll take over, boy. Get up, Joe. You too, Baskin. <laughs> That dog is wrong. He's wrong, I tell you. It was Bascom who killed Lambert. Oh, you squeal little rat. It was. You know it was, Bascom. You knifed him. Yeah, but it was your idea. And you buried the dude. That's tool. enough. You'll share the penalty for murder. Looks like a complete confession, Sergeant. That's right, Constable. Put the handcuffs on them both. I wouldn't have believed it. I still can't see how King could pick the man with nothing but a drawstring from a parker. This parka. drawstring? Well, this is for my own parker. Well, your I own? found nothing beneath the professor's body. Found nothing. I simply paved the way for the guilty man to betray himself. But if he found nothing, how did King... Fear, Tom. The guilty man was afraid, and King hates the scent of fear. Now, uh, about those handcuffs. Yeah, right away. That's the end of the trail for you two. Yeah, that confounded dog. If it hadn't been for him, we'd yeah, be all right. You, you yellow-livered pole cat. If you hadn't have been so shut up, that's enough. Give me your wrist. Uh, Miss Jane, uh, at least you have the satisfaction of knowing that... Justice has been done. Uh, I'll be all right, Sergeant Preston. I I think Father would be satisfied with the way things worked out. He always said he wanted to... Well, all his life he had a terror of the lingering slow death of old age. He always hoped that when the end came, it would come suddenly and quickly. And while he was active, he, he died with his boots on. The treasure he discovered will make you very wealthy. I... I feel that I should share it, after all. If it hadn't been for you and King... King's the one who found the treasure. (laughs) Yes, King, I'm talking about you, fella. Thanks to you, old Moby's treasure's been found. This case is closed. These radio dramas are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. So long.